Hey folks, Tor here. Sorry if this is a bit rough and ready. I've actually only learnt how to do this this morning. But one of my subscribers um, got on the support tool this morning and said that um, she wanted to be able to... She'd already added some of our slides into a presentation she was running on her clinic TV screen. And this is a question actually that's cropped up before. So I figured I'd better answer it really. Um, so she wanted to be able to incorporate some of our whiteboard animations um, and some of the videos that we'd, in we'd included in our uh, marketing campaign kits along with some of the slides. And she wanted to know if she could incorporate the videos. So I've worked out how you do it. So basically on here you have um, my presentation. This one Actually, I'm going to delete that slide because that's not really supposed to be in there. So I've I've, Im I've imported three individual slides and I've also got a video in here and I just want to show you what I've done. So what you have to do is you go to um, transitions. So you can choose from a whole different variety of transitions here. I've just gone for a really simple one, but there's lots of things that you can explore there if you want to. The vital things that you need to know, I'm on a PowerPoint from Mac, so this might be slightly different in your version, but the principle is basically the same. Um, underneath, if you click on the slide here under transitions, you will see there's a duration and there is also a, that will normally be clicked to on mouse click. So that basically means that when you're running the slideshow, when you click a button, it will move the slide on. In this case, you don't want that to happen because you want it to run automatically. So this is the duration of the transition, so the, the flick between one slide to the next slide. And this one here is how long you want that slide to be there for and to, and before it changes to the next one. And there's a couple of other settings that you need to know here. My customer made a very good point that she doesn't want the sound on because obviously it's distracting for the receptionist. So you have an option here to have no sound. And if you click on the video, so what I did is I just went and imported this video. So I went in and just went insert and video and I went and found the video on my computer. Plonked it in here, resized it to what I wanted it to be. When you click on a video, once it's in there, you get these little tabs for video format and playback. It's playback is the one that you want. Um, and what you want to do is you want to click to start it automatically. It will default probably to being start when clicked. So you need to change that to, de to default to start automatically. And you can change volume here as well. So I've got volume on, but in the case of my client, she probably wants the volume off. You can obviously set it to loop as well if you want to replay the same video, but obviously if you've got other slides in the sequence, you don't really want to do that. You just wanted to skip onto the next slide. So then if we go on to the next slide again under transitions, same setting, one second. Now, what I would suggest you do is you bring all your static pictures in and set this transition and duration and, <clears throat> and how long you want the slide to stay there for and click apply to all because that will apply to every every slide that you've got in here. So if you've got 30 or 40 slides, it's a very quick way of doing it. But you will obviously then need to go back and manually edit the video, the slides with videos on because you will need to extend the amount of time it runs for. This is 40 seconds. Um, this video runs for exactly 40 seconds and 30.35. So I've put the 40 in there. You could put 41. Um, so that's how long you want it to stay on that slide for. So now let me show you how to preview that. So if you now go to slideshow and you do play from start, we'll see what happens and fingers crossed it all works. That's the end of the video, and then it moves on to the next slide, and the next slide. So that's worked exactly as we wanted it to. There's also, I think, some settings in here uh, where you can loop continuously if you want to, and you can change some different settings here. You obviously want to choose the using timings 
if present and I think that should do the job so I hope that's been helpful but basically all our marketing kits contain videos animations and a whole bunch of these images so you can pull them into a presentation you can insert other slides with details about your clinic or offers that are going on at the moment and it makes it really easy to swap stuff in and out and just create a kind of dynamic changing presentation and having shown you how to do all of that very cleverly there is a but if you are on a Mac like I am and you try and use the export function uh, the, sorry the file and export here and you ex try and export that as either a movie or an mp4 which is probably what you're trying to do if you just want to put a file onto a USB drive and then just play it from the TV. When you export it, it doesn't export the videos with it, so it won't play the videos. So here's two that I've created, and as you'll see, it just syncs the slides. So that's not very helpful. So I've just spent about half an hour trying to figure out how we get around that one it is at least looping it's doing the right thing but obviously it's not playing the video now I think that that may be unique to Max because there seem to be loads and loads of support queries everywhere saying what a pain in the neck so if you're on a Windows you, you you're operating PowerPoint on a Windows machine you may well be able to do that and you may be fine so I'd be interested in anyone's feedback about that if you are on a Mac your best option is to mirror your laptop, so have a cheap laptop sitting around somewhere, maybe just buy a cheapo one, um, have it sitting and connect it to your TV, which you can do several ways. You can either use an HDMI cable, which is one of those. Um, you may need an adapter that I know my Mac has got an HDMI port in it, but you may need a display adapter. That's one way of doing it. If you've got Apple TV, well, okay, Chromecast, let's do Chromecast screencasting first. That's quite a cheap way of doing it. And if you've got AirPlay, if you've got Apple TV, then you can use AirPlay just to mirror it straight onto, um, onto your, from your laptop onto your TV. That is not obviously a cheap laptop option. I'd be interested in finding out your views on how to do this if you found a way around this. But for now, that's about as far as I can take you. But I still hope it's been helpful. Cheers, guys.